Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Josh Capel. Hi. Uh, looking at Merchants and Marauders Broadsides, of which you are the designer. Yes. Yes. Yep. You sort of wear both hats. Yes. Even different things, but. Not today. Designer in this case. And I will confess to knowing very little about this. Z-Man did not, they sort of played it close to the best, it seemed. With. Yes, they did. You got the, the short description, two-player yeah. game, mm -hmm. and then. And then here it is. Okay, well here's the opportunity to yes. learn more about it. Okay. Yes. So it's Merchants and Marauders Broadsides. It is a head-to-head two-player game okay. uh, where each player is the captain of a pirate ship that is trying to sink the other pirate ship. Okay. So um, we're going to use all of the dirty tricks at our disposal to try to do that. <clears throat> each player has their own board. This is my, my player board and this is your player board. We sit across the table from each other. And um, this shows us the status of our ship. Each ship has uh, three basic zones. There's your sails, your decks, where all your crew are, and there's your hulls, where all of your uh, planks are. Right. And during the course of the game, I'm going to be trying to take shots at you to knock away your sails, to knock away your crew, to knock away your planks. And you're going to be trying to do the same thing to me in order to uh, degrade my abilities and ultimately win the game. Okay. Uh, to win the game, you want to knock, hold, knock enough planks out of my hull in order to sink my ship, or you want to uh, eliminate both my captain and my first mate. Okay. If you can do that, you win the game. Or if I can do that to you first, then I'll win the game. Okay. Yeah. Seems straightforward enough. Yeah. All right. Um, how are we doing that? Okay, basically... We, obviously, we have decks of cards here that we're going to... Yep. Um, it's a card-driven game in the sense that we each have a hand of cards. Whoops. And they're uh, regular number cards. Okay. But they are... It's actually custom 1 through 10, and there are wild cards in there as well. And these cards, you have a hand of six to, to begin the game, and you're going to be playing them in order to trigger various actions that you're capable of the game. The, generally, the action that you're going to be, want to be doing the most is targeting so that you can fire at your opponent. And this is okay. one of the more innovative aspects of the game. Let's slide this up a little bit so we can put this under here. Sure. Um, at the beginning of the game, I'm going to zero in on an area of my opponent's ship that I want to that I want to target. This is my aim marker. I'm the red player. So okay. I'm going to pick up uh, a zone of his ship that I want that I want to target. Let's say I want to target his sails. So I'll put that there, and that tells me I need to lay out one target card. So I'll draw one target card from the shared target deck. And now, during during my turn, I'm going to be trying to lay cards to the X and Y of this target in order to line up a good shot. Okay. I want to try and create a coordinate that's going to be uh, close, as close to the center as possible. So the best I can do here is a three. There, I do happen to have one. So on my turn, maybe I'll aim by laying a card like that. And maybe I'll do another aim action. Uh, I'll take a one here and, and play it there. So I've okay. aimed, and then at the end of my turn, I can optionally fire. And when I fire, I check to see how good I've done. In this case, I've cre I haven't created a bullseye, but I've created a good shot. And then that's going to do damage to my to my opponent's ship. Okay. On your turn, you get two actions. One of them has to be aim, but your other one can be some uh, any one of a number of other actions. Our cannons on our ships are loaded with shot. There's a bag here of different types of shot. And the different types of shot are color-coded to let you know which area of the ship they're best at hitting. So mm -hmm. you have a chain shot. It's white. It's particularly good at hitting sails of your opponents. And I should have loaded these cannons earlier. They would have uh, begun the game loaded. There we go. So this chain shot that's particularly good at knocking away his sails. And you want to do that to degrade his uh, maneuverability. So if I knock away enough of his sails, I'm going to start to expose these little wheels here that tells me that these wheel-related abilities are going to be weaker and weaker. So okay. he's not going to be able to shear off, which is an action that will knock cards from my hand, or he's not going to be able to evade, which means he's going to be able to get out of the way of my shots. Okay. That's why you want to go after his sails. Um, if I start knocking uh, crew away from his deck with uh, canister shot, the black ones, then he's going to start to lose, a, lose ability, uh, he's going to lose damage because he doesn't have enough men manning his cannons, and eventually if there's no men here, he can't fire this cannon at all. Or in the center deck here, if I start knocking enough men away from here, well, he's going to start, his hand limit is going to start to go down. So the more men are missing from that section, he's going to have fewer and fewer cards in his hand, so less and less versatility. Okay. And eventually the first mate goes. Exactly. Okay. Um, you can move guys around on the deck using uh, the repair action. You can move them around. You can even have men crawl up into the rigging to replace the sails that have been knocked away. So if they climb up into there, you can bring sails back in and lose the men. Okay. So there are ways to sort of uh, damage control during the game. But generally, you're trying to either uh, knock away enough of his crew so that he can't fire at you, 
knock away enough of his sails so he can't get out of the way of your shots, or knock away enough of his planks so uh, his ship sinks and he wins the game. Okay. If you do manage to knock away all the planks in a section, then he's going to suffer some disaster, a randomized disaster that will, that will reveal, oh, all of a sudden, ringing falls, so he's going to lose three sails. So okay. lose, depleting a section entirely is going to create some big uh, tragedy somewhere on a ship, is going to, and likely uh, be a big, big problem for him. Okay. Yeah. And that's uh, basically how I play the game. There um, are a number of actions, like I said. cards on the side here? What are those? Okay, these... <laughs> um, I would hope you'd tell me. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> these are the Dirty Tricks deck. Okay. And that is the Reputations deck. Okay. At the beginning of the game, each of us is going to draw three reputations, look at them, and then keep one. And that's the captain that you are during the game. So during this game, uh -huh. I have this advantage, you have that advantage. And that means that every single game, it's going to be, uh, it's going to change how we play against each other because I have a certain advantage that you don't. Or maybe I'm better at evading your shots, maybe you have a bigger hand limit, maybe um, you will continue to fight on for a few rounds even after I sink your ship. So okay. there are different uh, captain abilities in okay. the deck. As, that's, and so that's a, dirty tricks. Yeah, that's a persistent power that lasts over the course of the game. Right. And the dirty tricks deck, we do that same thing three times. We draw three, keep one, draw three, keep one, draw three, keep one. And then you have a hand of actions that the other guy doesn't have. So these are one-shot actions that you can pull dirty tricks on the other player during the game. Like, uh, this one is going to make, make your shots, if they were poor shots, they're going to graduate to perfect shots when you, when you play this card. Or this one uh, allows you extra set of sails. It allows you to return sails to your rigging zones after they've been knocked away. There's a whole wide variety of offensive and defensive actions that you, the other guy doesn't know you have that are going to color your gameplay okay. during the game. And that's it? You have three for the game? And you have three for the game, and then that's it. Okay. Um, the other aspect I wanted to point out is uh, the shearing off and evading in the game. These are two sort of defensive moves that you can do during the game. So, a lot of the time you're going to be aiming, sometimes you're going to be holding, which is just drawing cards. You can reload, which because you're going to be expending shot as you, as you go, and one of the actions, if you discard a pair, you can reload all your cannons or any two cards to just grab one shot from okay. the bag. Uh, the broadside, to broadside you want to discard a flush. Let's say I have uh, two clubs. I can discard any number of clubs. Then I block off clubs. I can't use clubs anymore for the game. And that's okay. going to let me fire all of my uh, cannons at him at the same time. Okay. It doesn't do the normal amount of damage, but it'll do one shot to his sails, one damage to his deck, one damage to his deck, and one damage to his planks. Okay. So instead of zeroing in, the broadside is just a blast that hits everything, everything at the same time. And I cannot use clubs for the rest of the game. I only have four broadsides. Okay. Shearing off is the next action, and that's a similar one, except I'm going to discard a straight. So let's say I had a five, six, seven. Or a 678, I could play my 678. That's a straight. I would have to cover up the 678. I'm not allowed to use those again uh, uh, during the game. And that's going to knock away three cards from his hand. Actually, four cards from his hand. The number of cards I played plus one. Okay. So that is going to help me keep him from being, uh, from having versatility during the game, degrade his ability. And lastly, he is evading. When he shoots me, evading, I want to discard a straight, just like a shear off to evade him, or a straight flush to do an even better, stronger evasion. So if I discard a straight flush of three cards, for example, then I would um, cover up those three spots again. Let's say I did a five, six, seven. I'd cover up five, six, seven. And I can't use those numbers again for this game. And then I'd dodge three points of damage that he had launched in my direction. Okay. If, if I did just a straight, instead of a straight flush, it does half of the defensive ability, so I'm rounding down. So I'd only actually lose uh, one point of damage. Okay. So the game goes back and forth like that. We, we take our turn with two actions. He takes his turn with two actions. And basically, you're zero in on different sections, you're trying to pick apart his defenses and uh, keep him from doing the same to you while you're trying to sink his ship. All right. Wow. Very concise <gasps> review. That gets everything there. Yeah. So we'll rehearse there. All right. Okay. Thanks very much, Josh, for no an problem. overview of Merchants and Marauders broadsides. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Yeah.